Many so-called Christian churches believe that if someone like you denies that the Bible is God's word, mm -hmm. this makes them a cult leader. Mm. What would you say about this assumption? Well, they've just made every scientist on the planet who doesn't believe the Bible is God's word a, a cult leader, and they've just made every Muslim a cult, uh, you know, on the planet the same. And they've just, do you know what I mean? Like, it, like it's totally illogical. These mm -hmm. kind of arguments are totally illogical. If a, the Bible is not God's word, quite simply, and I'm going to state that quite simply, and and if that offends you as a Christian, well, I don't know why it does offend you. I, I don't see why you don't think the Bible itself is offensive towards God, mm. to be frank. Like the Bible talks of a God that is completely out of harmony with love, that punishes people, destroys people. The Bible paints God as the worst dictator in human history, right? Uh, in the, and, and the worst murderer in human history, in fact. And also that in the future, God will become the worst murderer in human history is what the Bible portrays. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm asking you, why do you believe such a book when it portrays God like this? Mm -hmm. God's nothing like this. The Bible itself, when it talks about God, is blasphemous towards God. Now, now there's no other way I can say it. Like, that is the truth. Now, how could you then say that just because I'm saying the Bible is not God's word, that it means that I'm a cult leader? Well, I don't see the relationship myself. And also that automatically makes almost every other religion other than the Christian faith cults, uh, which is also very, very derogatory towards those other religious faiths. And the reality is many of them are cults, I know, mm. because of their behaviour, but uh, certainly not my, my behaviour doesn't mirror their behaviour. Yeah. Like my behaviour personally is that I believe completely that God is a God of love. God is a God of truth. God loves every individual. God never wants to punish anybody. God is always looking for the prodigal to return, which is something that I taught, which is even recorded in your Bible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you think that, that Jesus is going to come along and tell you that the Bible is God's word, then I'm sorry, there is never going to be a Jesus who comes along and tells you that who's actually the real Jesus. He's going to be just a fake person, just like the other fake people that you have believed in who are teaching those particular concepts. The truth is the, Bible is the Bible does not portray God to be the person God is. Mm -hmm. That's reality. The Bible does not portray me to be the person I am. The Bible does not portray many things that are truthful. It does contain truth, just like many holy books contain truth. The Koran contains truth. It doesn't mean it is the truth. Mm. It contains truth. And what we've got to do is learn to have the discernment to tell when we're being told the truth and when we're not. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you really gain that discernment is by having a loving connection with God and having love in your heart. Then you can actually measure everything that's being said against the yardstick of love. And once you've measured it against the yardstick of love, you can easily determine what is true and what is false. And that's what we all need to learn to do, no matter what faith we are from or what historical background that we have. We need to all examine the yardstick of love and use that as the measure of everything. And when we use that as the measure of everything, well, there's very few things on this planet that measure up. Mm -hmm. There's very few religions that measure up there's very few political parties that measure up. There's very few organisations, businesses that measure up because they're all promoting unloving practices. And what we need to do is learn to use love as the yardstick of measure. And once we start doing that, we'll, we will have the means individually to determine what is true and what is not. Mm -hmm. And what I'm suggesting to you is that that's what you need to do. If you believe the Bible to be God's word, then I suggest to you that you have never use love as a yardstick and you've never done it sincerely and you need to do something about that if you're ever going to have a relationship with God. Mm. And don't expect any Jesus in the future to come along and say the Bible is God's word and actually be the real Jesus because the reality is no person who knows the truth about God can agree with the Bible on all things. Mm. Now, there are things in the Bible I certainly can agree with but the whole Bible, no, I definitely cannot agree with it. 
because it does not contain the truth about God. It does not contain the truth about myself. It does not contain the truth about love and many other things. It contains portions of truth, just like any other man-made, man-written document. It contains portions of truth and it contains portions of truth about my life. It contains portions of truth about God. It contains portions of truth about relationships and so forth and portions of truth about the universe, but it doesn't contain all the truth and it's impossible for it to contain all the truth. So, so if that makes me a cult leader saying those things, then I must be a cult leader. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't agree. I don't agree that it makes anybody a cult leader to disagree with the Bible, just like it makes nobody a cult leader to disagree with the Koran or any other thing for that matter. They are, each individual on this planet is allowed to have their own opinions and I'm an individual on this planet who's allowed to have his own opinion. <laughs> that doesn't make me a cult leader. It makes me an individual who's got his own opinions. <laughs> cool.